Good afternoon. This is HorseRacingNation.com handicapper Jared Horak. We have two Kentucky Derby prep races run this week for our video feature race of the week. We have the Florida Derby and the Spiral Stakes. Now, the Spiral Stakes is the better betting race. That's where I'm going to have my wagering strategies. But we'll, we'll quickly run through the, the Florida Derby right now. It looks like a good match between a Mel Heyman and Nyquist. And then Fellowship looks third best on paper. The others seem overmatched. Uh, but it, it should be a good race. Uh, Nyquist coming in from Florida. He's eligible for a $1 million bonus for, be, for uh, going through the Fasig Tipton sales ring in, in Florida. And if he wins this race, he will win a, a $1 million bonus. And he already has 30 Kentucky Derby points. He's in good shape there. This will be his first two-turn race since the Breeders' Cup Juvenile last year. He returned in the San Vicente, looked good that day. So now he's stretching back out, shipping across country uh, to face Mo Heyman, who's also undefeated. Uh, Mo Heyman is 5 for 5. He's 2 for 2 at Gulfstream. He's also 1 for 1 at the 9 furlong distance of the Florida Derby. He won the Remsen Stakes at 9 furlongs. So he already has the two races over the track, uh, and, and he's, he's already won at the distance. Uh, also, um, the key here is he's, he's drawn outside of, of Nyquist as well. So all the, all the signs point to, to Mo Heyman being the, the horse to beat, but Nyquist uh, should be ready to run a good race as well. And then, as I mentioned, Fellowship, he finished third in the Holy Bull and the Fountain of Youth. He looks like uh, third best on paper again. He's going to sit back, rally, he may get a piece of this. Any other horse that could sneak into the top three, maybe Majesto, it's possible. He earned a good number in his maiden win at a mile on the 16th at Gulfstream on February 27th. If anybody else can sneak into the top three, uh, maybe it would be him. Uh, but the good betting race, I think, is, is the spiral stakes at Turfway. It'll go as race 10, it, and it has qualifying points, 50 points for the winner, 20 for second, 10 for third, and five for fourth. It's worth half the points of the Florida Derby, but still an important race uh, anyway. The winner is going to get in if they're Kentucky Derby eligible. Jensen is not, was not made eligible for the Triple Crown Series by Larry Jones, so if he wins, the, the 50 points will go to him, but they're not, uh, they're not going to run him in the Triple Crown. They would have to pay a $200,000 $200, supplemental fee. Uh, but for the spiral, drew a full field, 12 horses, plus two also eligibles. The pace scenario looks like Jensen. We mentioned him. He's got some speed. Don't be too salty, has a little bit of speed, and then maybe railless. Those three look like the horses that one of those three could set the pace. And I'm going to make my top choice Jensen. In, and he was part of my derby list earlier on. I had him on my list the last few weeks. Uh, but since Larry Jones opted not to make him eligible in the late Triple Crown uh, nominating session, I'm probably going to drop him off my list now. Uh, but this one... Four lifetime starts, he ran well all four times, and his speed figure from each race uh, improved. And it's good that his best two speed figures of his life were his last two races, and both were around two turns. Uh, so he has early pressing versatility. Last time out at Fairgrounds, February 25th, optional claiming company. Uh, he ended up uh, going wire to wire, winning by almost seven lengths. It was such an easy win that day. And before that, he stalked the pace, uh, and he was able to finish second in a, in a two-turn race. Uh, so he's, his speed figures are going up, as I said. He's got that early pressing versatility, a good inner post. His damn sire hard spun. He won the spiral stakes a few years back for trainer Larry Jones. Uh, so there's a lot of positives. Larry Jones said he uh, this horse reminds him of hard spun. Also, uh, he, he thinks that he will handle synthetic and, and his training well. There's a lot of positives, and I think that he should offer a bit of value as well. Now, Cassiopeia. Uh, for trainer Graham Motion is going to be my second choice. Uh, Graham Motion won, won the spiral stakes with Animal Kingdom a few years back, and then that one came back and won the Kentucky Derby. Cassiopeia has been pointing to this race for quite some time. He's actually um, started his career overseas uh, in Great Britain, and he had a, a second and a first on synthetic overseas, and they, they shipped him to the, to actually to Canada for, for the, um, the gray stakes, and that was the Kentucky Derby prep. And as a two-year-old, he finished second in that race, so he earned some derby points that day. And then last time in the El Camino Real Golden Gate Fields, also a Kentucky Derby points race. He had a bad start, rallied nicely, finished third. Uh, they haven't run him since then. They were pointing to the spiral all along. He's been training at Santa Anita because he was on the West Coast. Graham Motion has a string out there. And he has that nice bullet work uh, from in March, March 20th, uh, six furlongs and one, 12, and three. So he looks like he's ready to run a good race. We know he handles synthetic. He just needs a clean start under Alan Garcia. He can't spot the field several lengths. And Alan Garcia did ride this one in the gray stakes, so he, he does know this horse. And if he can at least get him out of the gate, he doesn't have to be right up on the pace, but just don't break a few lengths slow. If he can just get him out there and be at least mid-pack and try to pounce on these, he could be interesting. 
My third choice in this race is going to be Azar for trainer Todd Pletcher. Now this one is, has, has run on uh, some different footing. He's been on firm turf, uh, yielding turf, fast track last time he won that one. Uh, and, and he was able to, uh, to run well on good turf and then also on firm turf. So maybe he'll be able to handle the synthetic footing since he's handled a variety of, of uh, different footings and, and, and done pretty well. But the good thing about this one is in his first three career starts last year, and ending with the with, an, with anticipation stakes on turf, his speed figure was going up. And then, and then it, it flattened out, and then he didn't run well in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf. They laid him off, and now this year, his two speed figures this year better than any of his, his, of his two-year-old figures. So that's a good sign. He's, he's a faster horse this year. Third race off the layoff, he could run well. And then Aero Force is the, 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 the unknown in this race. Don't really know what he's going to do. He was part of my derby list, uh, but then I dropped him off after he ran so poorly in the Risen Star. He was basically eased. He was 10th by 39. Just never picked his feet up as the favorite that day. Uh, he won the Kentucky Jockey Club Stakes as a two-year-old. That was a key race. He beat more spirit who's a solid Kentucky Derby contender for Bob Baffert and Mo Tom as well. Uh, so he's faced some good horses. He beat them on a sloppy track at Churchill, and he ran well on turf prior to that. So maybe he'll be able to handle the synthetic. He certainly didn't handle the fast dirt track at Fairgrounds last time out. So this is how we're going to play this race. For our $40 wagers, we're going to make a $16 win wager on number three, Jensen. We're going to play a $6 exacta box with Jensen and Cassiopeia. That's the three and the eight. And then we're going to come back and play a $3 exacta box. We're going to put Jensen and Cassi Cassiopeia, or excuse me, it's not exacta box, a $3 exacta putting Jensen and Cassiopeia on top of number 10, Aero Force, and number 12, Azar. So one more time, $16 win wager on Jensen, $6 exacta box, Jensen, Cassiopeia, $3 exacta, put Jensen and Cassiopeia on top of Aero Force, and number 12, Azar. So that'll wrap up this video. Um, as I mentioned, with those two derby preps, still a lot of points on the line. We actually have seven derby preps. Counting these two, there are still seven left. So 28 horses, since they have points for the top four, 28 horses can still earn points with seven races to go. So a lot can change still. Next week, we had the Wood Memorial, the Bluegrass, and the Santa Anita Derby. They're all 100-point races. The week after that, the Arkansas Derby, and then the Lexington Stakes, the last chance that's only worth 10 points to the winner. But still, if a horse has points and they, and they win that one, they could still sneak in. So there's a lot that can still happen on the road to the Derby. Uh, so next week, we'll be back previewing the big races, the Wood, Bluegrass, and Santa Anita Derby. Until then, good luck at the races.